Ray Rivera and his wife Allison moved to Baltimore in December of 2004. They had just recently gotten married. They moved to Baltimore because Ray's longtime friend, Porter Stansbury, offered him a job writing financial newsletters. Ray met Porter when they were in high school and they became really good friends. Ray's dream was to be a writer and director, but the screenplays he wrote while they lived in Southern California were not paying for bills. That is the reason why he took the job in Baltimore. This was the happiest Ray and Allison had ever been. They found a beautiful house in Baltimore that they both loved. In 2006, a colleague of Allison named Claudia lived with them in their house. On May 16, 2006, Allison left Baltimore for a business trip. That evening she tried to call Ray, but he didn't pick up. She then called Claudia, who picked up. Claudia explained at around 6.30 pm, Ray received a phone call. She heard him say oh as if he was shocked by some news he got and then he ran out of the house and hadn't returned yet. The next morning, Claudia called Allison again and told her that Ray still wasn't home. This worried Allison and she immediately returned home. Allison called Ray's family to hear if any of them heard from Ray, but they hadn't. Ray's brother Angel immediately flew in from Orlando to Baltimore to come help search for him. The next day, more of Ray and Allison's family came to help too. They started calling all of the hospitals in case he was there. They were also able to get the media involved. Six days after Ray was last seen, on the 22nd of May, Allison's parents were driving around through different parking lots in town looking for his car. In one of his parking lots, they found his car, but there was still no sign of him. On the car, there was a parking ticket had indicated that a car had been there the entire six days that he had been missing. A parking lot was close to his place of work, Stansbury and Associates. It was also close to the Belvedere Hotel. The area around the parking lot then became the main focus of where they searched for Ray. Two days after Ray's car was found, three of his co-workers went onto the roof of the Belvedere Hotel. As they peeked over the edge, they saw a hole in one of the lower roofs. Around the hole, they saw flip-flops. They didn't really think this had anything to do with Ray's disappearance, but they decided to call the police anyways. The area where the hole was, was the old racquetball room, but was sometimes used as a conference room. It wasn't used for the previous couple of weeks though, so the police had to get one of the workers at the hotel to open it up for them. When they entered the room, there was an awful smell. They then noticed a body laying against the wall under the hole. Later that day, Ray's family got a call from the police asking of him to come in. They were then informed that a body was identified as 32-year-old Ray Rivera. Detective Michael Bayer was assigned to the case to find out what exactly happened. The hole wasn't that big, so it was determined that Ray must have came through vertically at a great speed based on his injuries. The next question was, how did Ray get there? The initial belief was that he either fell, jumped, or was pushed off the top of the hotel. From the edge of the roof to where the hole was is about 45 feet. It seemed incredibly unlikely to the detective that anyone could have made this leap, especially if Ray was wearing flip-flops. The roof was also near impossible to get to if he didn't know exactly how to find it. There were a lot of hidden staircases and locked doors you had to go through to get to the roof in the first place. It just didn't make sense to the detective that Ray could have done any of this without anyone in the hotel seeing him. He then came up with a second possible way for Ray to have gone through the hole. He went to the parking garage next, which was adjacent to the Belvedere Hotel. Immediately he noticed that the hole was too far away and was just not possible for someone to jump that far. Even if Ray could have made the jump, it was only a 20 foot drop and he would have survived most likely. Lastly, Detective Bayer looked at the ledge of the 11th floor. The problem with this was to get to the ledge, you had to go through someone's room to get to the windows, and speaking of the windows, they don't even open. When the police went to the hall, they noticed that Ray's cell phone was on the roof, still in working condition, without any scratch. 
I also found his glasses to be without any scratches. This raised more questions as to how Ray managed to get through the hole. The detective noted that his phone, his glasses and his flip-flops look really staged. He believes it was put there after Ray somehow went through the hole. On the side of the Belvedere Hotel, where the hole was, there were so many windows and guests living there that surely someone must have seen or heard something if he really went through the hole. The hotel itself had lots of cameras inside and there was no sign of Ray ever being inside the hotel. The camera on the roof wasn't working, which is just infuriating. One of the police officers sounded this case, ruled that Ray had taken his own life and stopped looking into the case. This shocked Ray's family. They tried to argue that Ray was in a really good place in his life and he wouldn't have done that. Allison told them how excited Ray was to start a new family with her. Allison then went to the medical examiner. The medical examiner told Allison the way that Ray's shins were broken was not consistent with someone that fell. Detective Michael Bayer, who also believed there was more to this, was taken off the case by the police department. Allison still decided to fight the decision and look through the house for anything that could help. In the office, Allison found a note behind the computer. The writing on this note was extremely small. Allison determined that Ray made the note on the same day he disappeared when she saw scraps in the bin. It was a very unusual note. In the note, some movie names were listed and also the names of some of his family members. He also made a list of all the people he knew, but somehow left off some very significant people, which was strange. Allison typed one of the weird phrases included in the note into Google, and the first result that came up had to do with the Freemasons. She knew that Ray was interested in societies such as the Freemasons, and he was doing research about them for a possible screenplay. This also made Allison believe that maybe Ray found something he wasn't supposed to, and that it could have cost him his life. It was initially believed that his note could possibly have been written in code. Someone had watched this case being featured on Unsolved Mysteries actually came forward believing he might have cracked the code. In the note, there's a reference of a game that Ray was playing. Also, one of the movies he listed was called The Game. In the movie, there's just one big scene near the end where the main character jumped off the roof of a fancy hotel and goes through the glass roof. The similarities to Ray's case are truly astonishing. The whole movie is about this crazy game that a company arranges that makes you think you lose everything in order to let you appreciate the life again. Ray was an unsuccessful movie script writer and maybe he got involved in something that tried to imitate the game in some way. In the Unsolved Mysteries episode of Ray, you can see two see-through roof windows next to the hole caused by Ray. Did he try to go through one of the windows like in the game? One of the other things that were looked into was his phone. It was determined that the call Ray received had caused him to run out of his house came from his workplace. It is unknown who exactly made this call however, since it came from the switchboard. His friend Porter Stansberry refused to talk to the police or to Ray's family, which was just bizarre. They were the best of friends. During the Unsolved Mysteries episode of Ray's case, Allison talked about how a week before Ray went missing, the alarm in their house went off. Ray went downstairs to check, but there was no one. What Allison found strange, however, was how scared Ray seemed to be. It was almost as if he expected there to be someone. Then again a few days later, just before Ray disappeared, the alarm again went off one evening and they found that the windows were tampered with. Allison now believes that someone did something horrible to Ray, but she does not know why.